so it can also be done on paper. Okay. What we have here is chromatography paper, it's relatively narrow. We want to put the carrier at the bottom <coughs> in case you do this by yourself. You want to cut the piece of paper the length that once you put a plug in it, which we have many of, and so that it's maybe a little higher, that the bottom of it is in the solvent here. This is a solvent that initially also like uh, extracted the pigments that were after from the materials, <coughs> that the bottom of it is in the solvent. And as water will adhere to things on the outside, <coughs> you can see then the water adhering to the molecules and the fibers in the paper, and it will start going up because it will be drier, higher up on the paper, so there will be a higher concentration of water below it, and the, the water will want to go from a high concentration to a lower concentration. So the water will get, or the, the solvent will go into it, and will start carrying up, it will take the pigments with it. If this dot here, which I made from the extract, is made up of multiple pigments, and the pigments are a different size, the molecules are a different size. If they're bigger, they do not go as fast, and the smaller ones will go faster like this. The colors will start separating. Okay. <coughs> I've set one up with the solvent already. Okay, so let me move that in here now. Okay. The solvent is made up of, so the bottom now is in water. You want to, as you put in the paper, you want to prevent the dot to be in the solvent. Okay. So you don't want to put too much of it in. The sol this solvent is made of acetone, petroleum, and ether. So don't go sniffing it necessarily for a long time. <laughs> Nobody can, you know, withstand sniffing it. This was actually an extract from a green alga. So now the water is in, and we're shaking it. Oh, it's already moving. Okay. And the solvent is in, so the green is already moving up. I'm going to put this here. I'll do the same thing for droplets from the brown uh, algae extract. I can find it in. <coughs> for that, we use, I did this one already. Uh, you have been used. Um, these are called capillary tubes, okay. and <clears throat> because of that same uh, characteristic of liquids and paper or liquids and um, contact with other structures, so I'm putting this at the bottom. The liquid will work its way up the capillary tube. And I want to touch it about 50 times. Okay. So I go like this, about an inch from the bottom, slightly less than an inch from the bottom. You make the contact, and because it's so attracted to an area that's dry, goes from the high concentration to the low concentration, I already see multiple colors in that dot that I did not see in that green elbow one. Okay. The uh, you can look up in the lab manual or in the book or online which type of uh, pigments or chlorophylls are in brown algae and which type of chlorophylls are in uh, green algae. And I believe in green algae the chlorophylls are fairly similar to land plants like spinach and, and, uh, and also cacti. So that's about... 15 times. So for me, it goes about you know, five touches on a dot. I think they may have like diluted this selection. So that's about 24 times. Dot, 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 dot. 
on Tuesday and Monday, everyone got to do this for their table. Um, by last night, there was not enough of the brown anymore. Let me put a little bit more on. So there's very limited amount of brown. I hope next semester they have enough of the brown, especially if they do four lives. Here that has been used. This one closed. It's also a very good idea. <laughs> so you may not have thought of like help and stuff as a brown elga before, um, um, but it is. <coughs> so this one can reach a liquid that's at the bottom. I've got that prepped correctly now. And all I have to do now is put the carrier or the solvent in. Not too much because they don't reach the dot. Ah, not over my fingers either, preferably. I believe if you drink that stuff. Uh, go ahead and try it. You know what? I should not have said that. Drum all. I strongly advise you not to try it. You can look it up. I'm quite sure that. The MSDS, the Material Safety Data Sheet, <coughs> lists it, and uh, I'm happy to provide that for you. <coughs> Trust me, if you look on the internet, I'm quite sure someone wrote about it. So, we'll put this one away. Keep an eye on it. Okay. And we have both of these. The green LG one has gotten a head start, so. I'll try to keep an eye on it. If you see it getting close to the dot and I'm too involved with stuff I'm talking about, which any faculty members too into what they're talking about, and then say, like, hey, Dr. W, that's getting way close to the to the cork. Please let me know. That would be great. So, and I say, I'll take a look. If you're filming, you could film it for 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take it. Uh, <laughs> so that's how that is done. It's a separation of molecules. Uh, sometimes the molecules have a color. Sometimes the colors do not show until you spray it with a, a coloring reagent. Well, yeah. Dr. W, yes. this is the green algae, correct? And this is the brown algae. Right. And I did not label it. That's the problem. <laughs>